Hello and welcome back. In this episode of Parent Quick Smarts, we will be covering fifth grade addition and subtraction of decimals. When we went to school, the study of addition and subtraction with decimals oftentimes focused on lining up the decimal point and following the procedure for adding and subtracting whole numbers. In subtraction, we would borrow from the neighboring place value when necessary or carry the one when adding. While this would get us through the computation, it did not really explain what we were doing to the place values or mathematically why we were doing it. We only understood borrowing as a procedure, which often leads to misconceptions with our students, such as thinking that they are only adding one to the place value to the right. In this video, we are going to show you how our students will use regrouping with place value. Throughout the unit, your child will compare, order, and write decimal amounts to the thousandths place. Use strategies to determine reasonable estimates of decimal values. And add and subtract decimal amounts to the hundredths place. Students will need to understand how to write and compare decimal amounts to the thousandths prior to adding and subtracting decimals. It is important that students relate their understanding of the pattern within the place value of whole numbers to decimal place value. For example, understanding that 7 is 10 times greater than 7 tenths and 7 hundredths is 1 tenth of 7 tenths. They should be able to use this understanding of the base 10 system that each place is 10 times the place to its right and 1 tenth of the place to its left to notate the value as shown above. For example, 1 group of 1 plus 7 groups of 1 tenth plus 2 groups of 1 hundredth plus 6 groups of 1 thousandth. Your child's class may begin the study of addition and subtraction of decimals with another challenging real-world problem. For example, consider the following. First, the students would want to identify the important information in the scenario and use it to determine a reasonable estimate. Looking at the problem, we see that Sammy's plant is 1 in 35 hundredths meters and Jaylene's is 19 hundredths of a meter. And the question is asking how much taller Sammy's plant is. So we would need to subtract to find the difference in heights. Using benchmarks of 0, 5 tenths or a half, and the next whole, students could estimate a reasonable answer by saying that 19 hundredths is closest to the benchmark of 0, and 1 in 35 hundredths is closest to the benchmark of 1 in 5 tenths we would get a reasonable estimate of about 1 and 5 tenths meters. Next, they may be asked to create a model to justify and explain the solution to this situation. For example, by using base 10 blocks, if we use the flat to represent a whole, the rod to represent a tenth of that whole, and the unit cubes to represent a hundredth of that whole, the students could model 1 and 35 hundredths, the greater amount, as shown below. They would not need to model the 19 hundredths that they are subtracting. They would just remove this from their model. They do not have enough hundredths in their model to remove 9, the amount in the hundredths place. So they would need to regroup one of their tenths as 10 hundredths using their understanding that each place value is 10 times the place value to its right. This would give them a total of 15 hundredths. Now they could remove or subtract the 9 hundredths and then remove 1 tenth for a difference of 1 and 16 hundredths meters. Once your student can explain and model how regrouping works within addition and subtraction of decimals, it is important that they learn to relate the manipulatives to the representational models and use them as well. Quick draws and quick picks can be used on tests and at home when manipulatives are not available. They can also be labeled to show the steps that one takes through their thinking in a problem solving situation. In our problem, we could represent the flat or holes as a square, rods as a line, and the unit cubes as circles. Efficiency and clarity within a model are important, 
Students should be encouraged to use lines for rods and squares for flats so that they are not spending valuable problem solving time to create each little square on the manipulatives. Drawing 100 squares for a flat is not efficient. And use a circle for the units so that they do not confuse them with a flat, which is a larger square. Comparing a quick pick to our base, to our base 10 model, we again see that there are not enough hundreds to remove when we are trying to subtract, so we will have to, re have to regroup. Students will see this with the standard algorithm as well, if they have correctly lined up their place values. Students should be encouraged to line up the place value rather than lining up the decimal points. If they have lined the place values up correctly, the decimal points should line up as a result. By crossing out one of the tenths in our model and regrouping it as ten hundredths, we see what we are doing in the standard algorithm. We then have enough hundredths to subtract nine in the hundredths place. We can then subtract one tenth from the two tenths, which gives us our solution of one and sixteen hundredths meters. It's important to give opportunities to practice the math skills that your fifth grade is studying in class out in the real world in the context of their everyday life. One way that you could practice adding and subtracting decimals with your child is making change. When you go to the store and pay with cash, ask your child to tell you how much change you should, you should receive and ask them to justify their reasoning by explaining their strategy. Share with your students when you are balancing your bank account, either online or in a check register. Do you enjoy baseball? Sit with your fifth grader and compare the values of their favorite player's fielding statistics or RBIs. Can they place the players in order by their statistics? Here are some examples of problems your students may be asked to solve as they progress through this unit in their GoMath textbook. Some questions that you may want to ask your child in order to help build their understanding as they progress through this unit are, compare and contrast decimals and whole numbers. How do you check for re the reasonableness of your answer? How do properties of math help you to solve addition and subtraction decimal problems? Which strategies can you use to add and subtract money? Thank you for joining us today on Parent Quick Smarts. Remember, the best way that you can support your child's education is to keep in communication with your child's teacher. Until next time, take a look at these websites, thinkcentral.com and elementarymath.mysdhc.org. See you next episode.